Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Today is our special guest day, where we will hear from a friend of the ministry who will share their insight and stories on truth in this chaotic world. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, everybody, uh, it's great uh, seeing you. Uh, Kathy, today is guest day, and uh, we're excited to have uh, Bob and Carrie Rockwell uh, with us. They're from McKinney, Texas, uh, leaders in living waters, uh, as uh, well as Kathy. Uh, and uh, we were all, all together recently because we were filming new content uh, for our online courses, so that was quite fun. Uh, to so be much fun. To, to be together, <laughs> and I uh, had a big party, actually, for my wife uh, Linda's birthday in celebration of our 20th anniversary. Uh, so we had we had one heck of a party, didn't we guys? Let's clarify that 20th anniversary of the ministry. Of the ministry, yes. And 70th um, birthday for Linda. So for Linda, lots yeah. of fun things to celelebrate. Yeah. Um, well, you guys are, are celebrating several years. Linda, ago. Linda and I are going on our 50, uh, let's see, our 52nd year. Get it right. 52nd, <laughs> 52nd year of, uh, of uh, anniversary being married so it's been amazing uh so anyway welcome bob and carrie and uh we love having you and uh so we'd love to you know have you share uh just briefly a little bit about how you each uh came to know christ um how did that how did that happen for each of you you want to go first honey or me i'll go first okay uh we had we were going to a little church in plano and we had not been to church for years and years and years. I grew up Catholic, but uh, mom and dad never really went when we were kids. I went sporadically because my friends did. But anyway, so this was the first time that we really heard about a relationship with Christ in this little church in Plano. And we kind of came to the decision at the same time. Uh, and Bob had signed up for a Bible study and I, I wasn't really sure. I said, well, I don't know. That that sounds really hard to me. But <laughs> So I signed up because I didn't want to be left behind. And actually, Rich, you taught the first Bible study I had ever been in. And it was called The Mind of Christ. That's right. Really That's right. I oh, you're that. kidding. This was yeah. down in Texas and you and you taught that, Rich? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. And I, I didn't know anything that was in the Bible. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know anything. And Rich was really sweet. I'd always have the wrong answer, <laughs> but he would just still make me feel good about it. And he'd say, well, yes, but. You can barely learn to spell Bible. That's so, it. Yeah. So it was a gradual process for me learning actually what the Bible said and what the, the decision I had made. I had prayed the prayer that everybody tells you to pray, but it didn't really start taking hold till I understood what it meant that Christ died for my sins. So it was a, a slower process for me, I think. Um, but it, that was, that was, yeah, about over 20, 20 some years ago now. Yeah. So how far into your marriage were you guys? Were you young married at that point? Was well, uh, we were married about 15, maybe 15 years. 15 years. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're, wow. we're married. Uh, we'll be married 42 years this coming September 1st. Mm -hmm. so wow. 10 years Congratulations. Behind. Yeah. We're 10 years behind <laughs> Yeah, my, mine was a mine was quite a bit more uh, dramatic in hindsight um, because I realized now that uh, God moved us to Texas so that we'd be safe. Yeah, that He chose mm -hmm. to be here. For sure. Uh, I worked for a company where I was the youngest, everything, uh, and I was slated to be its next president, a uh, Fortune 500 company, and uh, we got purchased by a British PE firm, and I stayed around and learned a lot, but realized I'm supposed to be someplace else. Didn't know why. And of course, I'm actually at that point, uh, not only am I not a Christian, I tended to make fun of people who went to church. And they're not that bright. And I, I was raised by a pretty uh, intellectual dad and uh, who also didn't go to church and didn't think it was needed. And so uh, anyway, so we moved uh, to Texas. It was really interesting. I, I worked for EDS and I came to Texas. And I'm wondering, this is strange because it's a totally different role than what I'm used to. And uh, one of the first things that happens, of course, you move to Texas, and the first question you get from your neighbors is, which church are you going to? Right. <laughs> so it's kind of a Texas thing. So our neighbors across the road from us, we moved into a little community called Little Bend, 
And they said, well, there's a church right around the corner that we go to, and it's really nice. And it was Willow Bend Church. So you could walk to it in probably five minutes. And so I went first. She went first. I said, if it doesn't suck too bad, I might go. <laughs> kind of thinking. And uh, she goes back and says, first off, she says, it's a cute little church. She said, they don't have pews. They have padded chairs. They have a rock <laughs> band, not a choir. Uh, the, the, the pastor has long hair and he rides a motorcycle. I said, oh, well, he's normal. So, <laughs> so, so we showed up. And I'll try to make this story somewhat succinct. But God did three incredible incredible miracles that confirmed that I was supposed to be there mm. uh, and one of those was um, we go to this church and uh, first off our worship within a couple of weeks the worship pastor kills himself oh yeah uh, because of a he, because of an adult mm. issue then very shortly after that our senior pastor decides to have um, a little bit of falling from grace mm -hmm. and rich and linda show up out of nowhere when our church is in total chaos and help us through that process and that's how we got to know yeah. them we had a pretty big house there in willow bend and we had a foyer that was big enough to seat about 35 people uh, for bible studies and he held it at our house yeah so, yes, a foyer. Like, so that was one of the one of the miracles so these guys come yeah. in so first off they're bright people they're successful people they don't fit the mold of what I thought, um, you know. And they're fun people. Were, and they were fun. Fun people. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> that was the first kind of real uh, incredible uh, uh, miracle. And the second one was I got invited to a, to a men's group. And this men's group was packed full of business executives. And I thought, huh, smart people, successful people, maybe. And they're all Christians. Wow. And they had just come back from a promise keepers, which for me, it was like, well, whatever that is. Right? <laughs> so that was kind of the second miracle. And then the third one happened just like within these are just within a few months um a friend of mine whose life group we started we started attending because they served wine and so yeah so we thought that's <laughs> we figured okay, okay this is normal fine. people yeah and anyway he says bob a buddy of mine just finished writing a book and submitted it to his publishers he's exhausted and he wants to come to dallas and spend several days four or five days and just relax and you've got a big house and i don't could he stay at your house and i said sure so a couple of weeks later, uh, Lee Strobel walks through our front door. Uh, he had just submitted the manuscript for Case for Christ, and, and he, wow. he needs to relax. So he stays, he spends five days at our house, and we learn his story was like mine. He says, I didn't believe this stuff. He says, you know, but he said, I started to realize that if this is true, it demands a decision. And it was like, it's like, wow, this guy's kind of like similar to, to my story. So Kind of a long-winded answer to, uh, we had no choice. The father brought us to Texas, yeah. and he did these incredible things. Mm -hmm. And and at that point, I, I'm all in. Okay, father, what's next? And Rich is teaching us to abide. They become good friends of ours. And it's like, whoa, we're on a roller coaster. <laughs> and it's been like that ever since. It's been great. So that's now 20, probably 25, 26 years ago now, Kathy, I think. Since that's amazing. I have never heard this story. I've been in oh, how many retreats with you guys and I had no idea of this story. I love oh, it. Yeah. And the, uh, again, you know, from, uh, uh, from my, our side of it, uh, Linda and I, uh, we had started, uh, a church in, uh, Boulder, Colorado called Flatirons Community Church. Uh, and, um, a whole, a whole interesting story about how that, uh, was launched, but uh, we started it from scratch and uh, grew it to be about 250 people. Um, had uh, uh, I was I had a business and I was just part time. Everybody you know that led it was part time. Nobody got paid, uh, but it was thriving and and it was time that I either had to go full time uh, or not because Linda and I were were basically leading it all and doing a tremendous amount of work and carrying a business and having a family. Uh, and God said, yeah, you're done. Thanks. Uh, go hire a full-time guy, which we did. Discipled him for about a year. And uh, Linda's family lived in Plano, Texas, uh, where Bob and Carrie lived. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we decided we're going to move down there for one year to um, help them get settled with health and hospitals and everything uh, in, a, in a new house for them. Uh, and our, <laughs> our intention was because of all we had done at this church in, in Colorado, was going to just take the year off. Uh, and we were going to take a break, uh, go to a church, uh -huh. go to a church, uh, and just sit there and not get involved uh, and, and be a receiver. Um, and so we had uh, driven by the same, the same place Bob and Kerry were at. It was called Willow Bend. 
Um, and they had a clever sign, I think, on there. And so I was like, hey, let's try that out. So we go, and the pastor that he's describing uh, was a tremendous uh, preacher. Um, and he was uh, evangelical primarily because all these people like Bob and Kerry were hearing the gospel and he was, he was, he was, he was terrific. And, uh, and we were excited. Hey, we're going to listen to a guy like this for a while and not get involved. And so, uh, we're there about the third, uh, Sunday and, uh, uh, we're sitting in the, uh, chairs, uh, before the service and uh, God says to me, the pastor's going to uh, quit today. He's committed adultery and he's leaving. Uh, I turned to Linda and I said, hey, Linda, the pastor's going to quit today and he's going to, you know, uh, committed <laughs> adultery and he's leaving. And she says, ah, no, you know, certainly not. And uh, he walks down the aisle, goes up on stage, says, I have an announcement to make. I'm leaving the church. Uh, I'm going to try to get restored. Uh, made a mistake, you know, and I'm I'm out. And he walks out, um, and that was it. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, all these young believers like Bob and Carrie uh, were kind of shocked, uh, as well as a lot of them were angry. Not Bob and Carrie, but a lot of them were angry mm-hmm. at how could this happen? How could a pastor like that happen? And I thought Christianity was, you know, uh, everything was always rosy. <laughs> so. Uh, and so they had discovered that I had started this church with an ordained minister and they come to me and said, you know, could you help us? <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking, uh, we're here to do nothing, you know, and, uh, <laughs> God said, yeah, I help them out. And so we, we, uh, we start meeting with all the small groups, uh, cause Bob, weren't you, by that time, were you, weren't you in leadership of some kind there or? Well, no, just because probably naturally, just from my business background, they would tap me for kind of stuff. But no, we had we had we were candidates to potentially start another group. Well, yes, we that's it. Doing, that's it. You were you, you were going to start a group, and so I met with all these uh, all these uh, small groups, and and I worked them through. You know, just okay, it's, you know, relax. You know, God God can can't handle this, and um, and then we start teaching. I remember teaching in your foyer. Uh, they had this fantastic house that you literally, we could, we could walk to from the church. Yeah. Um, and, uh, we started to invite people to learn what it means to, you know, hear God's, uh, uh mm-hmm. abide and, and get into the word. Um, and your foyer held like, was it 30 people, right? Oh yeah. Three dozen people. Easy. Yeah. yeah through 35 people, we would meet in their foyer and, and get in the word. And I remember Carrie, uh, she was a she was you know uh brand new to the whole thing uh and the neat thing about carrie and it's been true ever since is you know we'd be getting into the word and she'd say uh what about that how does that work you know i don't uh, it doesn't make sense to me you know and it would be uh refreshing because she's always had that honest uh view and then (laughs) when i'd say well what do you guys think about that carrie wouldn't hesitate to say well i think this you know and it would be it would be fun so it was it's been a real joy, you know, to get to know them uh, and uh, and have them included in abiding in leadership. And uh, I think it'd be uh, wonderful uh, for you two to share with us. How did you meet? How did you two meet and decide to get yes. married? And, and decide to yes. get married. Oh, let me start. <laughs> oh, another we, story. <laughs> we were in college together. We met in college in St. John, New Brunswick. And um, now you're talking. You're talking, by the way, about um, so everybody knows you're you're you guys are Canadian. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're dualies. Yeah. So yeah, born in Canada. So they're talking. They're talking about New Brunswick, Canada. Yes. Right. Far East Canada. Right. A and little different than Texas. Little different. Oh, oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> So he was dating a girl in my class, and she was actually a former beauty queen. When that we, <laughs> when, when we met, and he just he just hung out with us all the time, and and we had it was a, towards the end of the first year, and so we kind of just got acquainted, and then we went home for the summer, both of us different homes, different towns, and we just kind of thought about each other all summer long. And right before we had left, he invited me to go to a a blind party. No, no, no. Yeah, so it wasn't a blind date. It was, it was a party. It was a literal blind date with blind people. <laughs> we were the only. People. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, now wait, 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 just a second. So yeah, so you're inviting her to a on a on a blind date to a party of blind people. Right. Exactly. So I <laughs> yeah, I got to know this guy. I got to, I got to befriend this guy in the, one of the cafeterias at the college, and I was fascinated by it because he's totally completely blind, uh, and he ran the cash, and so he could feel the nominations on the on the bills. Oh and wow! So I was fascinated by this guy. I got to know him and just be, became friends. And he just says, hey, Bob, I got a party at my house. Uh, how would you like to come? I said, sure. Should I bring a date? Yeah. So I asked Carrie. Uh, even hey. though, so I kind of broke up with the other girl in the class. Well, so I asked, no, no, no. He did not. Said, okay. Okay. Hey, <laughs> not looking worse. So we went to this party as friends. And then he, so, but, we stayed up all night talking that night. But, but when yeah. we showed up, I didn't know. I just assumed, I guess, that there would be people that could see. But it was, <laughs> it was, it was all dark. And it was dark. It was dark. So we had to get the turn of the lamp on so we wouldn't bump into stuff. And so we're at a little hole. I'm blind date. And they were, it was great, delightful people. But on their first date, you were the only people that could see. <laughs> it was fun. And why, and why, why, why did you ask uh, Carrie? To go to the uh, party. My goodness. Well, yeah. now, now this is this is a back to something that you had mentioned, Rich. There was I got introduced to Carrie by another classmate of mine, and and the reason Carrie would say we would hang around, hang around with her classes is that the school of, of medical technology was primarily women, except for a couple of gay guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, and in my class, they're all engineering, industrial automation, and so they're all guys, mostly guys, one except girl. for one girl. And so it was just natural that. When they would need people to do kind of lab experiments on us, guys would be up there like, shoot, like flies yeah. to honey, you know? Yeah. And so she just was one of these, there was just something about Carrie. There was just this um, authenticity about her that I just, and, you know, beautiful, obviously, but also just this authenticity about Carrie that just, wow, she's just this wholesome, incredible young woman. And I was intrigued by her. So even though, yes, as Carrie said, I was still going up this other girl. I have to tell you, I was not as intrigued by the other girl that I currently had as a girlfriend, and so I just asked her out, and that was and that was the start. And after that, I was hooked. And that was the end of the year, so we went away to both of us to our uh, uh, respective homes. But it was interesting. You went to Toronto. No, no, that was, oh, that, was that, okay. that was that first summer. Yeah. Oh, anyway, so then we came back to school and we actually really started dating. But he was still dating this other girl. <laughs> anyway. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so at the end of that year, we had finished, uh, I had finished my course and I decided to go to Toronto, which is, you know, way far away from New Brunswick, um, because, you know, he wasn't breaking up with this other girl and like, why should I stick around? And so I left. And we got to make this shorter. I think oh, I'm sounding bad. Okay, shorter. I'm sounding bad. Okay. Four <laughs> months later. I came back because he said, you know, he sent me love letters. I miss you. I broke up with her. And so we came back, we dated, and we got engaged shortly after that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and we moved across the country three weeks after we got married. Yeah. <laughs> Packed up and moved across the country three weeks after we Didn't married. know anybody. Yeah. No furniture. Wow. Was that the move to Texas or that was elsewhere? No. That was a move uh, out uh, to Calgary, Alberta. Oh, we okay. Moved to New Brunswick, East Far Eastern Canada, to Calgary, Alberta. So we'd actually mm -hmm. moved out there twice, but um, so we moved out with our limited belongings three weeks after we were married um, and carted everything out with us and we moved out to Calgary. So took her away from her family three weeks after we got married. So her parents probably weren't all that excited about that. That's the way well, it was. So I, I got a couple. <laughs> one, uh -oh. one, all right, one. <laughs> what, what, what's the, what was the most unusual thing? about being at a party with, with all black people. I got well, I got to know about this. Well, two, two, for me, two things. One was that they had to turn on a light for us, you know, because they don't yeah, think they, of that. They right? didn't know. They, they didn't think know. of that, so they'd turn on yeah. a lamp. Uh, so it still wasn't very much, but, you, you know, you have to walk up and you have to get the people's attention. So you're kind of like, <clears throat> <clears throat> Oh, interesting. Because, you know, I can't not talk to the people. So we get to meet all these folks. But you just, it's just by, it's just, it's just very different. It's well, just, and one of the friends, one of the guys, the guy you knew played accordion. Oh, yeah, that was good. And Why Bob that? plays accordion. So they had their accordions. <laughs> 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 they were playing in the dark. 
with their accordions. So we can we can bore people like that, that are sighted and blind. Yeah. <laughs> Harry, what did you think of this as a first date? <laughs> I, I don't, I didn't really, I thought this is odd, but I didn't the flow. I just, I was there. I didn't know what to do, how to get their attention or anything. So I let him do most of the talking, but, um, and it, it was just weird. It was strange, but here's the part that happened. So after that, so I drive her back home and we sat in her driveway mm -hmm. and we talked. All, all night. night. I mean, I'm not. I'm not uh, just like two or three yeah. in the morning. I'm talking all, all night. All night. <laughs> That's when I knew that was it. I liked him. Yeah. There was not mm. anything about him I didn't like. Yeah. yeah. And that's when I knew so, I was going to break up with other girlfriends and all that kind of I stuff. So. Yeah. So, anyway. And yeah. so when you, uh, uh, and by the way, it's really cool. Uh, to me, it's exciting, you know, that, that a group a group of blind people would, would uh, and it's beautiful that they just function normally. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. hey, we're going to have a party and, and we're going to be together. That's that's really, uh, well, that's, it, a, that's it, a great, it, wonderful yeah, thing. I had snacks up there, but I have to try the first because I want <laughs> <laughs> So um, when you, so Carrie, you, you came back to school um, and dated, right? Um, and then how long was it? Uh, from dating to uh, getting uh, engaged and married? Um, it was, okay, for the last, for the, we came back to school, we dated for, he and I kind of dated off and on for a year. And then I moved to Toronto. So it was like a year and a half yeah. before I came back and we got together again and he professed his love for me. And, and um, then he got a job in um, Alberta. So that's when he asked me to marry well, him. Well, first I was working in, in Moncton, New Brunswick. But yeah, he was working in Moncton. The part that she's not saying, I gotta be, you know, oh. this, this doesn't make me look good again. <laughs> I knew that Carrie was the one, but I also had a girlfriend in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Oh, man. So, <laughs> Bob, so the, Bob, Bob. There were some logistics I had to take care of before I could, and then I actually, actually asked her to come back from Toronto. Yeah, I actually forgot so, about Angela. Yeah, so I, yeah. I, I we're not supposed to mention names. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> the, other, the other woman. <laughs> so, so when she came back, at, at that point, um, I, I mean, I knew this, she's the one. Yeah. So it was already it was already a done deal from my, from my standpoint. And from your uh, from your engagement, um, how long was it before you got married? I think it was six months about. Six, it seven months. Short. It was not long. It was, it was several months after her. See, she carries a sister that's 13 months older than her. Yeah. And she had just gotten married, so her parents are tapped out. She got married in, <laughs> so, in September of yeah, that same yeah. year. So we paid for wow. our own wedding. Yeah. So uh, so we kind of, we got married, yeah, September, yeah. September the 1st of 79. I don't remember that, Rich. It's a long time ago. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. And so uh, when, when during your marriage then did you move to Texas? We had been married about 15 years. Yeah, I was 39 years old when I moved. I was 36. To Texas. When when we became believers, he was 39. I was 36. It was, uh, yeah, it was, and it was within the first year we got. It was the summer of '95. Yeah. We moved, we moved yeah. to Texas 1995. Started uh, in in the move. The family moved in August. That was a, I remember because it was a 105 degree day. We moved into our house and. Um, that was in August, and then we started with the church. I think in like. September, October, <laughs> when, when, and then. When well, did you? Uh, what did you? What did you think about uh, 105 degrees? Well, it was a shock. <laughs> that, that was a shock. So, so we, you know, this house had like you know three different air conditioning systems, and and we're thinking we're from the Northeast. We should be able to keep our house at 68 degrees. Oh yeah. Uh, as, as they say in Texas, that dog don't hunt. <laughs> oh my gosh, horrible. it was horrible. So we started to realize, yeah. okay, can't do that. We need to use the fans <laughs> on the ceiling and keep it turned up. Yeah. Yeah. So it was right. quite a shock yeah. how hot it was. Yeah. But it's home now. It's been home since uh, 95. Mm -hmm. And the good Lord willing, this is where they'll put our carcasses. So <laughs> I love it. Well, and I'm stating the obvious here, but I'm just pointing out to the listeners, you guys and Rich, in telling the story of how y'all met and got to Texas and even how the cases came in and all of that are perfectly describing times that Rich and I have had conversations about how God works both sides of the equation yeah, yeah. and just his timing yes. and the number of puzzle pieces that had to be put together. But then, you know, as an outside, just now hearing the story, I love hearing the freshness of it 
because I know from watching you guys and from watching the cases, the fact that God intersected those two couples has had huge kingdom impact. The yeah. number of believers that have people that have been brought to Christ and then been discipled and then are discipling others. This is not just a little trickle. This is a huge tsunami that God set in motion. And I love hearing the backstory. Yeah. 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 So we find most days we're pretty well in awe of what God does. <laughs> <laughs> so describe to us, um, uh, you know, your uh, understanding, abiding, and how that's impacted your uh, your life together. Um, uh, and we'll talk. We talk about covenant. Kathy mentioned it actually that Bob and Carrie have always had a heart to give it away. Um, mm-hmm. So you've been small group leaders, and you've always been helpful to people, and been willing to process uh, truth with people. Uh, how has abiding uh, impacted you, and and what does that look like for you guys? I'll start. Okay. Wow. Uh, well, first off, I can't imagine a life not abiding. Uh, mm-hmm. I can't imagine a life where every single day uh, I'm not spending time talking to the Father in His Word and so on because yep. it's just it's just it's not fun to not do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I can't imagine a life where we're not abiding. Our lives are not what we expected they could be. I never would have believed. I mean, I gave up a, in a way. I gave up a lot uh, because I expected to run corporations my whole life. Um, and, and I didn't go on that path. And yet I would never go back to that for all the corn in Egypt. Uh, I mean, I just wouldn't. Uh, and so what the, what the father has done has been incredible. And it's just this learning to abide. And we see life, life has been an incredible adventure for us. Um, every, challenges that we, every challenge we've had, uh, God shows up and does some incredible stuff, even in the midst mm-hmm. of challenges. Uh, every every real beautiful thing that we get to do and experience, he just says, well, this is just a sample of what's more to come. So I can't imagine a life not abiding. I, I just can't. If, if, I had, if someone said, oh, you can't pray for two days and you can't open your Bible, I think I'd really feel a huge longing. Um, mm-hmm. I, I just think I would. Um, it would just not be good. So it's, it's completely transformed us. Yeah. Well, now I'll tell the truth. <laughs> well, that's the truth. <laughs> But for me, abiding at first was uh, hard, number at one, first, yeah. because we had to learn it. We had to learn that you could go to God and say, what do you have to say about this? Now, we mm-hmm. make a lot of mistakes in the beginning. I could tell you stories of what not to do. <laughs> yeah. But we just kept, Rich and Linda just kept, uh, you know, bringing us along and, and we kept learning more. And the more we, we learned about going to neutral, that was a game changer for us. Yeah. Mm. Because him being corporate and always the boss, it was hard for him to um, think of me as a partner more than, um, I guess he called the shots in the beginning. So we had to learn that that's not always beneficial because Mm -hmm. once he learned that my opinion matters and that God can speak through me, then it it was better for us as a couple. Now I have confidence and I trust that even if Mm. we have a disagreement, he has the Holy Spirit, I have the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will bring us to unity 100% of the time. And that gives me confidence that Mm -hmm. even if we're in a disagreement, we just don't know God's will yet. So we seek after God's will in every decision we make. And it makes life so much more peaceful and lovely and fun. Yeah. Well, I have to share with this. So as Carrie said, at the very start of abiding. So right now, I mean, it's it's exactly what I described. But when we first started, I still remember this, uh, and I remember complaining to Rich. Uh, and so this is years ago now. And so um, Rich has t- t- taught us about abiding. So we were one of the earlier people to go through an abiding class with these guys or a retreat. And so I just, I came to him one day and I just complained. I said, Rich, this is just not fun. <laughs> and he said, you know, I, I said, he said, well, what are you doing? So, well, I, you know, I'm writing my journal and I'm reading the Bible and I'm praying. Uh. Oh. <laughs> and I said, it's just not fun. And Rich had this very profound question. He said, Bob, uh, did you ever think to ask God to make it fun? So, <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so, so uh, he says, he says, uh, he said, let him, let him lead you. He says, it could take a while. So he said, just keep praying. God, would you make this fun? So anyway, I'm still working. I'm doing my abiding stuff. I'll talk, check in with Rich. Yeah, no, it's not fun yet. Anyway, 
one day, all of a sudden, I'm, you know, I'm in the I'm in the Word, and God shows me this incredible stuff, and I'm just like, whoa! And I I can't write fast enough. And then I talked with Rich, and I said, Rich, you showed me this, and, da, 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 da. and he said, Bob, are you having fun yet? That was it. <laughs> I love it. I love that was it. it. Okay, now I get it. Just just chill. Just take it easy, as Rich said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Enjoy it. So that's and that's what's been like ever since. But it's just all these little ahas. So yeah. <laughs> And also, I just want to say one more thing, because in the beginning, when I was starting to learn how to abide, Rich would always say to me, what's God speaking to you? And I go, well, God doesn't speak to me. He speaks to Bob. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I that. yeah. A, a huge aha for me when I realized that when I'm reading the Bible and something just quickens my spirit or gets me excited or I want to know about it, that's God speaking to me. Yeah. I finally realized he does speak to me and then then it seemed to, it was more personal then mm. so yeah so and then it got fun for you too right yeah, <laughs> yeah it's always fun but it was more of a, a to do well now yeah. often when we hear from god it's too scary this is what's really cool and he just has to learn to listen <laughs> <laughs> yeah. anyway, it's been pretty cool yeah and uh, as you're talking about um the fun of it um describe that it's not a mechanical thing, um, it's a relationship. Uh, why is that relationship with Christ uh, through the Holy Spirit uh, enjoyable and fun? Well, I, I, oh boy, so much comes to my mind for that one. First off is a recognition of, of uh, two absolute truths. One is the truth of who God is. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he is love. And, 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 I, and, I, and I had a friend of mine uh, illustrated with, a, if, if you guys have ever seen these so-called fidget spinners, you know, that have the yeah. spinner, finger, it has three little things on it. He said, and, he, and I love this illustration. He says, think of that as these three little things. As there's the Father and the Son and the Spirit. And he says, and you're his center. Yeah. He, he, was, says, they mm -hmm. and he says, just think yeah. of it. He said, the, the Father has created. He says, he's created everything that exists. And until he recreates, what's his focus? He says, it's you. All he wants is time with his kids and more kids. And that was like, wow. So that was the first, uh, wow, God just loves us. His constant focus is us. That was, that was the one that made a difference. The second one was how he sees us. Mm. Um, and, and a couple things, you know, the, the um, I think it's, a, is it, um, I keep wanting to say Second Peter one nine, where he says, "You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, yeah. a holy nation, a people." And then that one, and then and then I slowly read several times Psalm one thirty nine, yeah. And it just describes beautifully how the Father sees us, and that that view of how God sees us is so different than typically how we see ourselves. That changes for me everything. And so when I recognize this incredible God who always is with us, and then sees us as His most treasured precious children that just is that just knocks my socks off every single day yeah and what's fun for me is getting excited about how is god going to resolve this one yeah because <laughs> for me, it seems impossible but with god nothing's impossible and just just looking forward to seeing how he's going to resolve some of our issues and a lot of times we want to get ahead of God and fix them ourselves, which we have done. <laughs> and it doesn't always work out very well, but he always turns it around and turns it for good. So it's just having that um, joy, knowing that the father loves us so much that he wants his best for us. And that no matter what's going on, that he will give you the best. Yep. So, yeah. so, so back to Rich's back back to your question, Rich, because I just kind of gave you the, the, the preamble to that. Why it's not mechanical, oh, and it yeah. is the relationship, and the relationship is based on how he sees us, and then therefore, and who he is. So that's first off is the relationship, which is just incredible. And then as part of that love, he's a, he's infinitely forgiving. So, mm -hmm. uh, so you know, in our humanity, we keep messing up. Oh God, I didn't do this right. Uh, yeah. How's that working out for you? It's like the original Dr. Phil, right? Uh, not so good. <laughs> Just how about coming back? And, and, then, and then the whole thing around, you know, Romans 8, 1 and 2, there is therefore never, ever any condemnation. He never condemns us. He's just like, wow, welcome back. I've been waiting for you to just kind of crawl up here with me and abide with me. No condemnation. Welcome home. Yeah. And so never mechanical. It's never a do list. It's a be list. 
it's, it's, it's just really, joy it's to really be who with you him. are. Yeah. 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 It's, it's just, I can't describe it beyond that. Yeah. It is the relationship above all. Yeah. And as you've uh, uh, learned that and, and uh, enjoyed it, um, and you talked about uh, going to unity and God's will, discerning God's will. Kathy and I are in the middle of a, uh, our uh, podcast series about uh, understanding God's will. Um, how does that work for you two? And, you know, I'm thinking maybe you could share um, how you specifically approached it when you uh, wound up deciding, you know, being led to go to McKinney finding that house uh by the way uh, kathy we talk about grand um uh, they live in a in a, <laughs> in a grand place uh mm-hmm. that was pure, purely a gift from god and uh it's uh i know they're enjoying it and Lynn, Lynn and i get to go there uh we just love walking through the door you know because it's such mm-hmm. a it's such a spiritual beautiful place but how walk us through how did that how did you discern god's will together what were some of the uh aspects of that as you were led to do that and specifically to that house <clears throat> <laughs> wow uh, <laughs> there was a lot so i'll, I'll start gonna, from the beginning so i'm going to go back yeah. to the beginning and i got to be careful here we we uh we were called and i'm just going to say god put all the steps in place for us to leave a wonderful church where we were saved so the decision to leave willow bend church was not an easy one um it took me about two years it, longer yeah than it, it took quite a while but the, yeah. but the but the evidence the signs and the wonders of the father working uh were evident to me pretty early and and there was a whole lot of steps along and with we that. were not in unity uh, right uh, and so i could start to see already uh, what the father was doing and so first off just pertaining to the house so we lived in a house we had we'd already downsized once from our willow bend house and we moved further which north, love. Came, which he loved and we moved to a house that's a, that's a bit smaller, two-story house still with a pool, but it's small. I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't teach in their foyer or thirty-six people anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> and Terry, uh, Terry did not like that house. It was like the seventh one that we chose on. Okay, we just yeah, have a place to, to live. Because our we other house sold, you know, instantaneously. Well, and the part of that is God had told Bob that he needed to downsize because. Because we were going to give more. So we could, you know, have flexibility in our finances to do more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so anyway, so, okay, so now now the decision is made. Okay, you know something, we're supposed to move. And I thought, wow. Finally, after Terry saying, I hate this house, uh, and we've been in it for years. And 17 for, years. <laughs> uh, not quite that long that house. But anyway, so now we're getting ready to move. And, and I said, okay, good. Well, we'll move. But uh, here's my thinking. I don't want to pay the gray haired lady in the Cadillac 6% to sell this house to buy the same house down the street. You know, I'm just all, I'm just all attitude, right? So I said, <laughs> we didn't do anything. I said, but I said, I am not going to go through that, the, the process of building a house. So we can do anything except build a house. Well, anyway, we end up going, so we're, we just parked this thing because, okay, now we're at least we're, we're not in neutral. And no. we talked with Rich and Linda. They said, listen, do your due diligence, have a real estate agent come in, check the value of your house, da 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 da, and just start to investigate. So I'll try to make a long story fairly short. So through this whole process, God shows us, uh, yes, you will sell your house. And He showed me two things. And this is when we were actually on the retreat. And this was in Evergreen. This yeah, in Evergreen. yeah, that's right. And he showed us two things. He said, uh, the only two things I got clear of, Bob, uh, you are to sell your house. And secondly, Carrie must be extremely happy through the whole process. And that's all I heard. That was wow. all that I heard. And then, um, so anyway, through this whole process. We and, see, and see, Bob, that's when you started having a lot of fun. <laughs> 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 so, so I'm trying to make a long story short, but but again, again, it was a God thing. Through friends in this community where we now live, they said, there's a house for sale over here. We come over, look at the house. No, nah, that's not it. And we go and we see the show home. We said, ooh, that looks kind of neat. We he walk, said, let's go let's, look let's at the, the show home. home. We walk into the show home and it's like, this is it. This is the cutest little house. This is all we need. This is perfect. And he said, well, I only have one lot left in this whole area uh, for you to be able to build a house that size. And he says, come on, let me show it to you. She's down the street. Yeah, shows us this lot. And I thought, eh, At first I went, okay. eh, I don't want to go there, was a, there was an athletic building behind us. Yeah, no, yeah. Horrible. Anyway, now there's a big, long, now, old tree. Yes, but, old trees. So yeah. we, we, right then and there, I give the guy $5,000 and said, hold the lot. And lo and behold, we start the building process. Now we sold, so the other house, we put it, side so put on the market. We sell it like within 
a few three days, days of exactly oh, wow. what we asked for. Now, this is back, you know, three and a half, four years ago, four years ago. And we thought, oh, oh now we got no house to live in. And we're going to call it out. <laughs> so we had uh, dear friends of ours um, uh, who had a big house, and they said, listen, would you come live with us? They actually loved us that much. They said, would you come live with us? So for 51 weeks that it yeah. took to build our house, wow. we lived in kind of one wing of our friend's uh, house, and they are just such an incredible blessing. And we're still friends. And then, and since this house, <laughs> the other house, it was the year, of, like, what do you call it? The year of Carrie. So Carrie had a birthday in uh, the <laughs> of that year. We, 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 we do the, we decided to go forward in December. It becomes the week of Carrie because she starts shopping for stuff she's going to have for the house. That moves into the month of Carrie. That moved into the year of Carrie because she had to buy everything it. for the house. I loved it. So we brought nothing from the other house to this one. Everything's brand new. And so this is Carrie's cute little house. This is house. my heart's desire that God gave me. And it's half the size of the former house that she loved. So the fact that she's no, it's really better. happy I'm in this old. one. I can't clean the big house. <laughs> <laughs> I, God thing. It's just a, he just did, uh, and I learned. Don't say, "Well, we'll do anything except this." <laughs> how, how did you um, uh, together get led to go to McKinney? Well, that was again that friend that who said, the friend they, said lived in this they wanted us to move close to them. They're good friends of ours too, who've since moved to San Antonio. But um, they said we would love you to come live near us. And there's a house for sale. You guys gotta come see it. Da 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 da. And then that's what brought us to this community where we found the one lot that we could build this house on and built it. And then and they moved. So the that's community what brought... was a surprise because it, you come down this road with lined with myrtle trees and you come into this little oasis. It's like, where did where, this come we from? We didn't do this was here. <laughs> yeah. And so we didn't realize how much we would love living in McKinney, but God knew. Yeah. He knew we would love it here. So, and we we just we are just enjoying it, and we enjoy the neighbors and the neighborhood, and and we can everything. walk we can walk to downtown McKinney from our house in about twenty mm. minutes. The downtown McKinney is probably one of the nicest downtowns in the whole yeah. state. Yeah, it really is. And so, it's fun. Yeah. How did you um, together uh, come to unity on on all that? I mean, what was the process? What did that process look like between the two of you? I have learned that when Bob says no to something. I just go to the father and I say, well, <laughs> I don't agree with him, but I know I'm just going to leave it in your hands and uh, I don't have to do anything. I just, if it's his will, I know God's will is best and I'm better. So if it is his will and I want something that Bob doesn't, I know the father will make it work yeah. and vice versa. So, so. There's, yeah, there's two things really. So, you know, the father says, look for the signs and the wonders of my working. Uh, and so we've learned there's no such thing as coincidences. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not a molecule moves in this universe that he's not uh, aware of and in charge of. And so we just say, uh, Father, you're working. You're always working. And so we want to see you. And incidentally, uh, if I'm going down a path that's not yours, Father, would you block that? We're going to trust that you're going to stop that, that you're going to close that door uh, and bring us back. And even when we've made mistakes, and you're, start, you're seeing a pattern here, it's usually me saying, we can't do this. We're not going to do this. And then God telling Carrie, yes, we will. And then God showing me signs and wonders that says, that's exactly what you're going to do. <laughs> there's, there's a pattern, Kathy. You start to see it. Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> it's getting the time in between it getting shorter. And shorter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I'm, I'm less putting my feet into the, into the ground now. So. <laughs> So, I love something you said, Carrie, that uh, that I think is so central. I've heard you say it probably without you realizing it three or four times throughout the podcast already is that concept that God is good. Oh, yeah. So as he has taught you and grown your faith and, and shortened those surrender intervals and your willingness to go to neutral all comes back to that core belief that he taught you. Um, gently, I believe that he's good and that he, yeah. you can trust him to do what he says he's going to do. And I think that's such a beautiful thing to point out that it didn't, that didn't even grow in you overnight. That was something he worked into you and showed you by faith and stepping out and listening and learning and following that he is good. And so you've learned to trust him. And now you're just like living in the, the overflow of that. That was a process for me. I always felt like when God did something good for me, I always felt like, why me? Like, mm. I didn't deserve it. So it's always fun for me when he does do something good. Yeah. Especially for me. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 That's, 
Yeah. That's that like Catherine guilt background, huh? <laughs> 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 that was sad. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. And but, in, no. in addition to uh, doing uh, retreats, you know, which you guys are, uh, you know, love doing, I know, and give it away all the time. Um, uh, Bob, you're you're kind of setting up a, a new business where you can go in and really help companies. Uh, tell tell us a little bit about that. Uh, about uh, what what is it that you're trying to do, and and what is God leading you into now in in a a new thing that that is really up your alley of how gifted you are. Um, well, trying to make that in a nutshell. So in the past, so I've, I've now led four different companies, uh, and two of them I was actually coaching the CEO. And he said, uh, Bob, uh, I think you really need to leave, leave my company as president. And so uh, I've done that and led two companies through change. One of them was it just needed to improve a little bit. The other one was really, really good and needed to get, uh, to get even better to, to enable it to grow. And so I have, um, I guess there's a couple things that the father has given me. Um, one is the ability to see a path through complexity. Yep. Um, mm. That's one. The second one is the ability to actually address, um, if you will, bad things or chaos. In other words, fix messes. Uh, I believe everything. <laughs> I believe everything's possible. And so, the companies, most of the companies in the background, and even back when I worked for uh, Foxborough, when I was working for the big Fortune 500 company, I became known as a turnaround guy. So they would mm-hmm. send me to different parts of the world, and they'd say, "Fix, fix this." And so, whether it was operations in Canada or it was business in the Middle East uh, or wherever it was or distribution in the U.S., they'd say, Bob, could you fix this? Uh, I said, yeah, get, let's, let me tell me the team that's here now and let's get, let's get to work. And I have the ability to say, uh, not just, usually this is just something that God's given me, not just fix something, but make it better than it was. And so mm-hmm. I think God's telling me that take that skill set and still, you know, even though I'm 65 years old, you can still put that to use uh, and there's companies that need that. And so uh, so now we're looking for the father's leading. In the meantime, I still coach. I still coach executives, but I think there's an opportunity and what I'm kind of thrilled about. I don't know that I necessarily want to lead a company for years again, but I would love to lead organizations uh, through change. And there's an awful lot of uh, senior executives that have, that have told me, Bob, I can't seem to get my people engaged in trying to transform the business. And I, and I know why. Yeah. Uh, because they generally have a leadership challenge. If you don't have leadership, then forget about trying to get people to change the business. So hmm. uh, I've learned a ton through these uh, past years. And, and I guess I'm now just saying, okay, Father, where can I put this to use for uh, you know one or two more companies and uh, just really, really help them out? And so that would be kind of fun. So um, and in the meantime, I just get to every single day live out uh, my purpose, which is to help good people do great things. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I get to do every day. Yeah, and you hmm. can... Uh... Uh, either go in as a consultant or uh, you could actually even step on step in as a uh, leader uh, uh, because of your uh, ter- terrific background and I would say Kathy you know from uh, one thing that I've seen uh, and experienced actually interesting with both of them uh, but with Bob in the business world is because of their relationship with God mm-hmm. God gives them tremendous discernment yep. um, mm-hmm. about I mean- uh, all kinds of stuff. And, and Bob can a, a apply that in a business scenario because mm-hmm. he, like you said, you can see complex things and get in there and kind of get a, a path going of, you know, Hey, let's, let's get on this path and we'll see, we're going to see results. And uh, as they share together with couples, uh, they have great discernment on what is God saying to them, how to help them uh, grow, how to, how to abide, how to seek God's will. Uh, so there uh, you can tell, uh, they're having the time of their life, <laughs> and we, I love it. Um, and we're and we're praying with Bob that uh, his business, uh, because of his giftedness, uh, that God would uh, bless them uh, to make them a blessing mm-hmm. in that particular area, uh, so that he can give that away even even more. So you know we're excited. Mm-hmm. We're excited for you guys about that. Yeah, so. I have just loved hearing every minute of your story. I can't believe I've known you guys five years now and I haven't heard all of this. Yes. So yeah. thank you so much for sharing all of this. It truly is an inspiration. And I'm just going to add um, one little, this is me being a dork, I know. But I love when I notice these things, Bob, as you talked about, and even Rich just reiterated the discernment that he has given you in business and then you and Carrie as couples when you lead in ministry to restore and rebuild you realize the words you're using there are describing Jesus. Yeah. I mean, 
what a beautiful representation both you in the business world and the two of you in ministry are of Jesus's heart to restore and rebuild. And I just, that just, I love that. So thank you for sharing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, uh, very exciting. Uh, we love you guys and, uh, uh, thank you for sharing your story with everyone. It's going to be a thrill, uh, for everybody to hear it. And, uh, we look forward to seeing you guys in, uh, uh, October when you, uh, bring a, bring another group up uh, to Colorado and that'll be, that's going to be a fun oh, thing. Just, excellent. uh, and, and Kathy, as we, as we all understand just the privilege of us having fellowship, uh, yes. is, is just a special thing. And so we, it is. Uh, we're I excited and, and our, our kids just moved to Dallas. So we'll be seeing them. We're going to be come down. And I said, you know, get that guest room ready. Cause we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're coming. And I bet Carrie furnished it. Well, she did. Yeah. It's ready for you. Yep. Well, we're oh, coming. That's great. We're coming. That's great. Well, thank you guys for being here, and uh, uh, we just so enjoyed you. And uh, uh, if anybody uh, listening has questions or even would like to contact Bob about the business opportunity, you know, let us know, and uh, we'll get it to him uh, for sure. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Kathy, we'll pick up uh, uh, End Times Friday uh, tomorrow. Uh, Excellent. Uh, yeah. And then uh, continue on. But again, Bob and Carrie, thank you so much uh, for being part of uh, uh, our, our show, and, and we love, love you guys. Great to have you guys. I hope everyone enjoyed it as much as I did. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> have a great day, everybody. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.